is basically an open session for discussions, for throwing up of ideas, uh, what we could do, what we should do. Uh, but before we get into that, I would like to take a couple of minutes with the permission of the House to inform uh, some of the things which some of us have been doing uh, in the past, uh, in the recent past. And uh, let me start again with, you know, this Jayanti Natarajan's statement. And the thing which she said in one of the, one of the things she said is that we are looking at ways of how this can be achieved, legal ways. The, this is an eyewash. It's a political statement, what she has said. Because in terms of legal ways, the Environment Protection Act is strong enough for them to mandate it today without any difficulty. And this I'm telling you after having discussed this with an officer of the ministry just yesterday. But one thing which has certainly emerged from the discussions with officials is that they are indeed perplexed and don't know how to handle environmental flows. The minute you mention that to a number of officials, they're like, we don't know what to do with this. So in fact, civil society putting pressure on the ministry using environmental flows right now, the ministry is on the back foot on this and they really don't know what to do. I think this is an advantage which we should think of how we can maximize this. Uh, also another problem which is arising within the ministry is that different divisions do not know or they don't talk to each other and hence, different divisions do not know that the Expert Appraisal Committee has decided that BBM is the methodology to be used in other divisions. Because the Impact Assessment Division uh, and that too, the officers which deal with hydropower, they know that BBM has been accepted. But even within the Impact Assessment Division, other officers do not know that BBM is the methodology. <clears throat> uh, another interesting conversation which I had yesterday. Yeah. Has BBM been officially accepted by the ministry? No, it's not been officially accepted by the ministry. It's only the EAC. Has EAC officially accepted? Yes, EAC has officially. I mean, it's not in any minutes. But if you speak to the various EAC officials, they they keep saying that uh, we are asking for BBM all the time, including the member secretary of the EAC, who is an officer of the ministry. But what, what is the evidence? This is very important. No, the ev evidence is only in terms of... You can get some document, you know, in some terms of reference from wherever they have been screening or wherever, then they say that BBM should be used. That would be very useful. No, that is there. That is there in the minutes of... Uh, interesting conversation that happened yesterday was one of the officers said that we are now ourselves wondering about the accuracy of the data being presented by the project proponents. Now, this is an interesting development because so far whatever the project proponent gave as the data of uh, water was accepted as sacrosanct by the ministry. So we can we can learn to question this, we can try and see how. So these are just some of the conversations I'm throwing up so that perhaps we could have a discussion on that. Uh, as Himanshu had mentioned that uh, you know, in February, some of Himanshu, Lata and I, we met with uh, the Expert Appraisal Committee and we raised uh, a number of points on the entire process and then, uh, <coughs> sorry, 
Suresh gave a present presentation on the BBM to the EAC at that meeting. In the April meeting, they turn around and say that we have decided that 50% of the river should be free flowing. And yesterday when we were coming, we found that in the May meeting, uh, I'm sorry, Marshall, if you could uh, refresh my memory on which March meeting they accepted, and April meeting they have 200 meters. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. March meeting they accepted, and in April meeting, which was that dam? I'm, I'm sorry, Marshall, can you just stick to us? Yes, on the Ganga River, by PhD Right. Okay. So here, one meeting they are saying that we are now going to try and ensure 50% of the river will flow free and the very next month in the very next meeting they sanction a project which has only 200 meters of free flowing river so do we or do we not question the EAC and how do we go about doing it what is their accountability how do we question them that's one of the things which I think we could I'm throwing it open then then whether we do it or not it's a different thing um, another interesting conversation was that they said let the Ministry of Power inform the Ministry of Environment as to what is it that they want to do in terms of how many uh, dams that they want so that the Ministry can take an informed decision and I we turned around and said it should actually be the reverse. The ministry should say, determine what should be the environmental flow for every river and say that this is what is required for the river. Now ministry of power, you decide if there is some scope for you to generate hydropower from the balance. The officer said, yes, I mean, in, that should be the ideal situation but we are being governed by the 8% and 9% growth that comes from the Planning Commission and because the Planning Commission says we need to achieve X% percent growth so we are constrained by that now again this is a conversation which we have been talking to a lot saying that you know what is development and do we need this kind of growth but I'm just giving you a point of what what uh, was discussed uh, on the cost benefit analysis just uh, a small point was that this is something which we've been raising on amendments to the EI notification there are a lot of points and CBA is one of them saying that if under the forest uh, clearance they are expected for the uh, the CBA is a requirement under forest clearance why is it not a requirement under EI uh, under the environment clearance there has been no response or no <laughs> thing to that on the Bhagirathi ESA the only thing I could suggest over here to the houses that you know it's that the notification will lapse on the 30th of June if a final notification is not issued because the draft was last year in July the only way is we, we can put is right to the ministry putting pressure saying do not let this notification lapse because if it lapses we do not know when again there will be a political will to issue another draft and to finalize it that's something which is relatively simple and easy for all of us to do is to just write to the ministry and saying just two sentences saying do not let this notification lapse I'm sorry just write to the uh, no I mean one could either write to the minister or the secretary or to the concerned officer who's Dr. G.V. Subramanian who's an advisor in the ministry uh, and the final point which I wanted to inform was that there is an interesting, one of the officers told Lata that uh, they want to have an internal meeting to decide on what should be the terms of reference, ideal terms of reference for basin planning or uh, basin studies and cumulative impact studies. However, that 
the ministry to hold that workshop is being held back by Chatterjee, the secretary. He is not giving his green signal for it. So is that, that's one more thing which we could think of doing. So I just wanted to give a little bit of background to set the tone and maybe what we could discuss uh, on this. And if uh, Raul, do you have anything to add? I, okay, one, one thing which I have found in my experience which has been both at government of Maharashtra level and with the ministry is right, right and right. Because once it goes on their file, it's very difficult for them to deny that something has been written to them. And uh, <clears throat> you can always then hold them accountable, especially it works which I have used in the past quite successfully, at least in Maharashtra, is when you then go in for public interest litigation, saying that here you have built up your case, that you have written so much to the, to the concerned department of the government, uh, and there has been no response, and hence we have a justifiable reason for approaching the court. So, and somewhere it makes a dent uh, like, I mean, with e-flows, today the ministry is in a quandary. Is because many of us kept raising it over the years. Uh, and now they have been forced to take notice of it. Okay. So, perhaps that's one more way of this, just sharing my personal experience of dealing with governments.